Hi there, I'm Scott Lowe with Actual Tech Media, and I'm here today with Arnold Kandal, who is the Chief Technology Officer for H2O AI. Arnold, thank you for having us here today. Thank you for coming. We're going to do a demo. We're going to look at something pretty cool. Yes, right. we're going to look at H2O driverless AI. And we're going to look at a diabetes use case. Exactly. All right, let's go to the demo. Sounds great. So, Arnold, what are we looking at on the screen right now? So this is H2O driverless AI. And this is the, the screen where you can see the data sets that we have imported so far. So there's a bunch of data sets that are in the system. You can add more data sets like this. You can say local file system on this server where this is running. This could be my workstation, or it could be my laptop right here, or it could be a supercomputer with eight GPUs. And I can import data from, from this laptop. I can upload it basically from our demo laptop, or I can go to Hadoop file system to, to import a large data set, or I can go to Amazon or Google to pull in data from the cloud. In this case, we already have data sets here, but um, let's say we want to look at the data set like credit card data set. You can describe it, you can scroll up and down, you get an idea of what's in that data. Now, you said you wanted to do a diabetes demo, and I love the diabetes use case because it's, it's, it's something that is dear to our heart. We really like to, to make predictions for, for healthcare, right? Because that's where there's a lot of low hanging fruit because doctors and medical professionals are desperate for AI. So here is a column that's called readmitted that says yes or no how many times um, you are getting to be readmitted with a given condition in this hospital. And the question now is, uh, given all these diagnosis indicators, uh, your age, your gender, your race, and, and certain numbers of the, the chemicals that are measured in your bloodstream, do you have to get readmitted or not at a later point in time? That's the question we're raising here. So that's the data set that we have. We're going to say, let's predict the readmitted column. So in driverless AI, the first thing you have to do is select the data set, which we did. Now we're selecting the target column. And that's the readmitted flag, yes or no. You see there's two unique values for readmitted. And we know that out of 50,000 uh, records in this data set, about 9,000 times somebody had to be readmitted. So that's the overall view of the training data. Now we have these knobs here, accuracy, time, and interpretability. And you can say, I want higher accuracy. I really care about the accuracy in this problem. You can say, I also have a lot of patience. I, I like to wait a little bit longer to get a better model. And I really care about high interpretability. I want an interpretable model. Or I can say, no, I want less interpretability, but higher accuracy. I want all kinds of feature engineering going on. So weight of evidence, truncated SVD dimensionality reductions. We want numerical encodings, frequency encodings, target encodings. These are data science terms that are well familiar in the uh, in Kaggle space. The, the grandmasters, they love these terms. But the average data scientist doesn't need to know too much. They just need to know that it's kind of the secret sauce, the black magic that's going right. to do the work. And the more interpretability uh, goes to one, the more complicated the model can be, and the more um, difficult it is for a human to understand it out of the box. However, we still will make it explainable at the end, and I'll show you that in a second. So here for this demo, let's turn down the time a little bit, and let's turn down the accuracy so we can be fast. And let's predict, so let's say, the, the log loss. That's the thing that we want to optimize. So it's not predict, but the, the score that we want to optimize. And as a data scientist, you need to pick one of these. If you don't know what this is, you just leave the defaults alone. But these are metrics that you want to optimize. In this case, log loss says, make the probabilities right for my outcome of getting readmitted or not. And I really care about the probabilities. What is my chance of getting readmitted? Is it 10% or 90%? So a doctor might care about that. Right. More than just, let's say, the sort order, who are the top 10 people that get readmitted? Because that's useless in the moment that you are in the hospital and you wonder, should I get readmitted? It's pointless to say, oh, well, you belong to the top 10%. It's more important to know what is the actual probability. And there is some feedback saying there are some columns that are all missing or all constant. So these are dropped for this data set because they had bad data. That's good feedback. And already now that this is running, we know that this is running on a, on a GPU box. So there's four GPUs. They all have been uh, already active to build models. You can look at the trace, for example. You see that there's the red stuff. The red stuff is feature engineering. Each one of these little bubbles is another feature that's engineered, another column that's made in that data set automatically. So let's say you started out with 20 or 30 columns, like in this data set. We already made 500 more columns, all automatically using statistics. And all these green bars here are GPUs training models. And this will run for the next few minutes, and we'll have hundreds of models trained here you see 145 models are expected to be made in these couple minutes. 
And we already built 2,000 features out of that original data set with 50 columns. So this was actually a data set with 50 columns, but some of them were dropped, remember, because they had been constant. So right. we already dropped the useless stuff, and we're already making up much more useful stuff, yeah, all automatically. If it's constant, it has no impact on the outcome. Yes, then. yes, okay. yes. It's a, it's, a, it's a constant that means it's, it's useless for the model because right. there's no differentiation power. You, you can't make if-else decisions based on that. And here, for example, you know that the number inpatient visits of you was important, but now already we changed something. We already made some kind of number of emergency room visits plus number inpatient patients. Those two are baked together, and they're being um, used by a truncated SVD, which is a statistical method to turn these two features into one feature. So we basically turned the number of emergency room visits and the number of inpatient visits into one number. And that number has come a, a kind of a hybrid between emergency room visits and regular visits. And that hybrid is more predictive than either one alone because it's, it's, it's interesting, right? And you can learn stuff like that. And here is other stuff. The time in the hospital and the disposition ID, discharge number is also something that, that matters. Now, as a domain expert, you would have to look at this and say, hmm, do I have this information in, in, in scoring time when a patient comes to the hospital? For example, the patient number, is that something useful or not? Maybe that's a bad feature. Maybe you don't want to know that you are the 700th patient in this hospital. That doesn't mean anything. So, or maybe it means something because the hospital had a major upgrade last year and everybody since number 300 has been treated much better than those previously. So now it's up to the data scientist to interpret this and say, what does this mean? And how we do this is like this. We click on interpret this model and it automatically builds an interpretable version of this model. Even though this was a complicated model with hundreds of features in the end, uh, let me see, this feature, um, this model had actually used 48 features in the end. Out of the 2,000 that we engineered, it said 48 are useful. The rest I throw away. I don't need them anymore. I just explored the space. So out of the 48, it, it, it made a good prediction from those 48 features. And it, it now knows uh, how to say whether you get readmitted or not. And now we're asking the system, how exactly did that work? You know, one of the things that strikes me is that, da as we talked to earlier, data is currency, but also data has got to be accurate. I mean, you've got to, this is going to drive, this AI and, and machine learning and deep learning is going to really drive organizations to store more and data, and they're going to have to put mechanisms in place to make sure that data is consistent and accurate. That's a very good point. And for example, for this data set that we just looked at, there is a visualization button that you can visualize it. And this is something that is also completely new to the market. No one else has this. This is automatic visualization, which will look at the data set under the lens of a statistician without looking at any predictive column. This is just the data itself. What does this data set look like? And it automatically showed you here, what are the outliers? And it will yeah. tell you here, the number of lab procedures. Somebody has 120 number here, that's a big number. And you can see who that is, this person with that ID. Oh, now the other interpretation model is done. Um, it basically finished the interpretation view of this data set, and, and sorry, and this model. And it says, okay, this model that we just trained earlier had this accuracy, this, this is our metric. It was built in two and a half minutes, and these are the top features, right? And that alone is not yet enough. This just gives you a rough idea of what was important to the, to the model. And now we are going into the surrogate model space where you can ask, for example, a, a, a single a linear model for every decision point here. You can ask the linear model, what was the reason specifically for row 7,225 why did you get an outcome that says less than 30? And we can say these are the reason codes of a linear model. Exactly the number of inpatient had this impact, number diagnosis has this impact, and so on. So you get a linear coefficient contribution to, these prediction, to the outcome of this, this complicated model. So we are, we are basically giving very interpretable, human-readable explanations where you even get English, right? You can say, because your medical specialty was perinatology, you had an increase of 0.09. So there's, there's a lot of stuff like that that's very useful to domain experts. 
And this works on any data set that has a tabular structure. So it could be used in other fields such as fintech, uh, you know, insurances, whether it's fraud, churn, pricing, real estate, doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be medical. It can be your hobby project or it can be your 100 million row bank data set with all the fraud records of all the transactions in the last month or year. It can also, can also be bigger than that. It can be any size and we will handle the statistics for you. It can be strongly imbalanced. So one in a thousand outcome is not a problem. It doesn't have to be a 50-50. You know, it can be whatever the data is. And we do our best to make that work. That's very cool. Thank you very much. There's, there's other surrogate models such as decision trees, random forest decision um, importances where you can do partial dependence plots. You can see what would happen if you were, let's say your age was higher. Then you can see based on the age, this is the impact. So it doesn't have too much of an impact according to age. So you can start to look at the individual characteristics and yes. what impact they had on outcomes. Yes. Yes. That's really critical for organizations mm -hmm. trying to understand the why behind their yes. data. Yes, it's a local interpretation basically around the point of um, what happened. You can ask, if my age was a little bit higher, what would have happened? And you can ask that for um, individual records. So there's an, an, an importance that says for a, for a specific person, What's the, what's the importance of that specific person? So if I type in a number here, in my, in my, if I pick a point, let's say this, this observation here, and we know that the outcome was a no, and our prediction was 0.7. So it wasn't the best model, but now we can ask why, what was going on here? And we can now ask the feature importance of the global model, the yellow bar, and compare that with the feature importance for the local, for that one person, and we say, oh, look, this is how different it was from the rest globally. And we can already start to inter interpret what was going on for this specific individual when the decision was made. So this is a tool that is it's very valuable that you can look at any data set, make decisions in high accuracy, and at the same time have a highly interpretable, explainable solution that it gives you a scoring pipeline where in production you can ask, okay, what's the outcome? And then also, why is that what you said it was? Arnold, thank you for that demo. That was great. Thank you for having us. It was awesome. And thank you to our audience for watching this Roadcast video.